anyone out there? Or am I all alone? It wouldn't make a difference still, I don't wanna know. I thought it'd be over by now, but I got a while to go. I'd give away the ending, but you don't wanna know. Now obviously, I'm a pretty decent sized fan of the Kid Leroy. I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan or a, or a big fan or anything of that nature, but I do fuck with his music. You're gonna get a lot of people that say that, that the Kid Leroy was biting Juice World's sound, and I hate that argument so much because the, like Juice World literally wanted this kid to come up and be the star that he is today by helping him hone his sound, and obviously Juice World had a large influence on on the Kid Leroy. While I do think that they sound similar, in no way do I think that, that the Kid Leroy is a direct copy or like he's trying to bite the swag of the now passed on like Juice World. That's just not the way I think because they were friends. The word subgenre exists for this reason. You're not about to sit there and tell me that Polo G, Lil Durk, and, and Pooh Shiesty, like they all sound the same. They sound similar, but they all bring different things to the table, which is why they've elevated and they got to the success that they did because they're their own, just like I said the Kid Leroy and I've been excited for this ever since I started like reacting to the Kid Leroy I, I've, I've come to I've come to want his music to see what we have now right out the gate I will tell you I'm expecting for the Kid Leroy to be like heartbreak music like like kind of toxicity in terms of a relationship and that that's just what I come to expect hopefully we get a little bit of variation away from that because a lot of it, a lot of his sound and songs like focus and center around that theme which is you know it's gonna get stale after a certain amount of time and on the stale topic one of the things that does concern me and and it's a concern for for all artists that i do especially on albums when i see that the album is like this album is 28 28 29 songs long so like are all these songs gonna be short as fuck or what's the deal here like this is why j cole said look at how everybody clap when your 30 song album do a measly hundred thou because in today's day and age of music, nobody wants to sit there and listen to a 30 track album. Give me your 12 best tracks that you recorded over the last 18 months and let me bang. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited to see what we got. This is obviously a continuation of the Fuck Love series. So I am expecting a lot of that like toxicity, kind of broken relationship. I came from a broken place, so I don't know anything different than this. I'm expecting that, but I'll be frankly, I'll be pleasantly surprised if we get other things than that. But right now we got the first track, Over You. Nice little piano intro to like open up the album with the sadness and everything. It's nice. Got a lot of friends, but I feel alone. Only one of my hands myself. Talking to the voices in my head. Oh. Uh. Walk me out, you cut deep and scarred from the day you left. Like, this is nice. This is a good intro into into I like I would assume is just the trilogy of of this of the albums that he's put out about fuck love. It's a good intro and one thing about the Kid Leroy is like his singing voice is so unique, bruh. Like like that like his voice is perfect for this style of music. You know what I'm saying? Like it's got that pain, it's got that high pitchedness, it's got like a sound you can hear the you can hear the frustration and anger and just like worn downness of his of his emotions through his vocals. So good, bro. So good. Oh. Uh, I don't have a place in my heart no more. Trust too deep for a pandemic with my new bitch. Pan Frank, the only one I know in this whole world that won't fail. Now look at that bitch is a sound. I think you're gonna know I think you're in there. Where did you run a heart into the crowd? Ah, uh, yo, this is this is nice. It's exactly what I was expecting from the fuck love like title. Like I was expecting this. This seems like it's more uh like it's more resentful, I guess you could say. Like like fuck you, fuck love. Like you did me so dirty that I don't, I'm not gonna ever trust a single bitch ever again. The only thing that I'm worried about when it comes to this album, like I said, is the fact that it's it's 28 tracks minus the skits is 20 24 or 25 songs. That's like. That is a shitload of songs, especially if they're gonna stay along the same theme as this first opening track. That's that's a lot of music. That that's a lot of songs to keep on the same subject matter without without your audience getting bored or tired of it. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see how it goes. The next one we got, Not Sober. This one I'm excited about because this one's Polo G featuring Stunner. So like I'm a little bit I'm I like Polo G as you know. So this is one that people were like wanting me to do. You know. Oh, yeah, feel better when I'm not sober. Okay, hold on, baby, roll one sober. 
I like this right here. I like this right here. Hey, I will like this has this is not gonna be anything critical to the song. This is just like lyrics. Like I did like the fact that he said, what did he say? He said, fuck dirty sprite, give me the Hennessy and Cola. I'm happy that he like said, I'm not picking up the dirty sprite because it shows like it shows a new evolution, hopefully, for for artists and rappers to like go away from go away from codeine because codeine's killed i can't even tell you how many rappers it's more than more than a handful of rappers that have died from overdose to codeine i would take a rapper talking about hennessy and cola a thousand times over nothing to do with anything just wanted to point that out everything you see right now is the highlight no everything you see is a highlight i see my best friends change colors like a tie-dye is that a bar are we calling that a bar uh, i guess so i guess so Man, not really. That's not that good of a bar. I lied. Bro, yes, sir. I, I fuck with this. Cola. I could clearly, like, before Polo even hops on, I can. I don't know who the other guy is. Stunna Gambino. Never heard of him. But Polo G, clearly, I can hear on this type of instrumental with his melodic style of flow. I'm excited. I'm excited. This is good so far for me. Hold up, I can't fold up. Yes, so sir. Like I'm just. It's something about Polo. It's something about Polo G's flow. It's something about his voice, something about his like the the quality of his voice and the just the right amount of auto tune on it. It sounds so good, bro. So fucking good. And I like the different viewpoint that he's bringing like to the same style of song compared to Kid Leroy. Like I like Kid Leroy's verse for sure. It definitely fits his style. Like I'm going through bad times in this relationship and I need to medicate with alcohol. But Polo does the same thing. But like in a Polo G style, kind of like talking about the stunning. Obviously, we're rolling around in the IE with the doors off. Like the, the marriage of Polo G and the Kid Leroy is like perfect. It's, it's, it's like peanut butter and jelly, if I may. And I keep collecting back ends because they old us. Ah. Uh, comes to rock and shit and that's another beat call. Bro, the melody is so infectious. Like that is fucking tight bro i fuck with this song right here you think this is gonna be on the radio it probably is right that's hard bro hey hey bro they be screaming out indictments they be collecting us like just collecting us in droves like all y'all all, all y'all black people come with me we're putting you in jail. Bruh, that is a nice line right there. And I like the fact that it's not the same. And, and his voice is, yo, I don't, I've never listened to Stunna Gambino. I don't know how new he is. Per another, uh, perfect feature. Song is fire. Clearly, well, it's obviously song number two. I was going to say the best one on the album. We haven't even gotten anywhere. The Kid Leroy just gets better and better. Like he holds his own. The fact that he can hold his own with Justin Bieber. And then he can also hold his own with Polo G. Two completely opposite ends of the musical spectrum, Polo G and Justin Bieber, and Leroy fits both. He's so versatile. The only thing that I want him to be more versatile with is what we're talking about in these songs. And I get it, if this is like a trilogy, you're kind of locked in on this, that's the whole point, but future projects. I'm, I'm gonna need more diversity. You say you got it, I'll figure it out. Oh, well, I like to disagree. So keep that energy. I'm so So this is a nice little switch up in sound, especially considering that Stay is right before this. I'm always concerned about track order because the way you curate an album and is like it makes a difference on how the album sounds and how you feel, especially listening to it for the first time. So like the curation of Over You, kind of sad, like with the piano and then Not Sober, clearly a sad song. And then Stay, I know is like a, is like a faster, it's like a faster pace, kind of the same lyrics, but not really. It's a little more upbeat. It's a little more positive, even though there's negative lyrics in the song. And then we have the same energy, which is a little more aggressive pop, not necessarily hip hop or rap. It's just fire. Good curation so far. His voice is amazing, bro. That's really what sets his music off. If his voice didn't sound like that with like the especially like with that rasp, you know what I'm talking about? It gives the it gives the lyrics and it gives the performance more like energy. 
literally the same energy. But yeah, his his voice is really the reason why he's the star that he is or the rising star that he is. Because the lyrics, this is probably what our second or third album with the same with the same like literally the same energy. So like anybody else that had three tracks out of the same style, like you might get bored or you might get like ah, numb to numb to the sound, desensitized. But the Kid Leroy's voice just like keeps you in it. All right, next up we got I Wish. Yeah. Got our first producer tag. That's nice, right? I like that. I'm in the way of myself. Yeah, this is this is nice again. I mean, like that track right there, this is what I'm talking about. Like for me personally, it sounds good. It sounds like, you know, technic technicalities, technically speaking, from the sound and the mixing and the sound engineering and the melody and all of that. It sounds good. And his voice sounds perfect on this track again. But for me personally, well, whatever, how many tracks are we in? We're five tracks in. I'm already starting to feel that where I'm like getting desensitized to what he's talking about because it's it's not becoming redundant. Oh, that's kind of a harsh word, but I guess it is becoming redundant. The topics of every single song are like, are the same, just with different melodies, I guess. So this is why I said I would need, hopefully it comes in the album, but if it doesn't after this album, I would definitely need a clear switch or at least some type of like progression or experimentation about what he's talking about in the sound. He doesn't necessarily have to change the sound of because uh, this is like his style already, but I, I need more variation. But I'm excited about the next track because Don't Leave Me featuring G Erbo and Lil Durk, two of the best in the game at their, yo, he's got all the heavy hitters on this album, son. Lil Durk, G Erbo, Polo G, Justin, T I was gonna say Justin Timberlake, Justin Bieber, crazy. Lord, please. You hit me please. My oh, this is, this is hard right here. All right, so I hope G Herbo gets a feature other than just that right there. I'm not really a fan of this hook right here. Bay don't leave me 90,000 times. I mean, I get it in context with the, with the I'm a broken person, I cheated on you, you saw the picture in the bathroom, and he's like pleading, Bay don't leave me. But G Herbo deserves shine for a verse because like, I would want to hear the way G Herbo talks about the toxicity in his personality for women or if it's not like i just wanted to hear something a little more than what we got right there so i hope he has a verse if not we'll have to rely on a little dirt but we'll see uh, r.i.p the boy juice dog Whew. wasn't expecting that line That's hard, bro. That's hard. Bought my mom, bought my mom a new crib. Fuck designer. I'm not about to be spending my shit on designer just yet. I got bills to pay. I gotta make sure my mom, my family, my bro, gotta make sure everybody's good. Designer not gonna make sure everybody's good. Designer's gonna make sure I look good, but that ain't enough. Now I will say that this verse so far, it doesn't really fit the context of the of the song up until those last like two or three or four bars. And like everything else is talking about his struggle trying to make it out of like, you know, the very bottom bottom where he was I, I, I don't get I don't get the uh the tie into it but I do like the darker aggressive beat especially having G Herbo on the track he's a lot darker than Polo G I would say in terms of like the way his music sounds so I'm glad that the beat here like fits that Ah, this is, this is solid right here. Yeah. Lil Durk, can, he's so versatile, in my in my opinion. Lil Durk and Polo G. Like, they can, they can rap about whatever topic they want to without it sounding like they're not being themselves. Like, Lil Durk brought in all of his pain and traumas and experiences and all of that, but just stayed on stayed on topic with the song. That was a nice little cut right there for me. Like I said, I I, I wish that G Herbo actually had a had a verse, especially considering that Bay Don't Leave Me is like a large majority of his of his contribution. Like that's the only thing that he says. So I wanted G Herbo to have like a full on, even if it was just eight bars, you know, like or, or just something short. I was hoping I got more than that. But I do like the beat selection. 
I do like the way it ties into the overall theme of the album. I don't think we have a miss here, really. Next up, I think we got Tragic featuring Young Boy Never Broke Again. I think I did this song. Let me double check. Let me go to my page real quick. Yeah, yeah, I did do it. There's a whole last reaction to the music video for this song. So if you want to check that out, go ahead. It, Young Boy Never Broke Again. I am not a fan of him at all. I don't like his delivery style. I don't like his voice. I don't like any of that. Tragic is just an okay song for me. If any song so far was a miss, it would be Tragic. And most of it is probably going to be because I'm not really a huge fan of Young Boy Never Broke Again. We're moving on. We're going on to Pikachu. Pull up in the yellow level like Pikachu. Because I just... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Hold up. I think I did this track as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, sure did. I reacted to this song December 17th, 2020, bro. This was seven months ago that I reacted to this and it's barely making an album? Holy shit. Yeah, all right. I remember liking this track because I remember like it was a, uh, it, like he talks about the yellow lamb like Pikachu. It's a banger. I was a fan of this one. It's a reminiscent track, thinking about all the things that we've come from. And I fuck with that style from the Kid Leroy. It, it's a song solid placement in the album because this song is number seven actually i lied my dumb ass i had it on shuffle for the last two songs so over you is right not sober is correct stay is in the right order same energy is in the right order don't leave me is in the right order but i skipped six and seven so pikachu is an opening track to, to the next, and it, may, it makes even more sense now. You're not ending the album on a high note, you're starting the next portion of the album on a high note. All right, I still fuck with it, but we gotta go back and do track six and seven, which is Bad News and Still Choose You. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Been through hell and I survived the storm. I ah, the I like that. Yes, sir. Bro, I fuck with this song already. Oh my God. Does this dude miss? Cause I don't think he misses. The only miss that I know so far, like I said, which was tragic, which I also did out of order, but I was that was a miss for me, but it wasn't even because of him per se. It was because of NBA young boy. I didn't fuck with his feature, but him as an artist just bro, doesn't miss doesn't miss the production styles is switched up just enough just enough where i'm like all right yeah this is a little bit different but kind of the same you know oh i love that bro bad bad news i love that shit bad 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 news no Hey. Mm. I was I was right there when nobody was. Don't ever try to act like you were never loved. Because I was with you in them train. I was shoot bitch, I was shooting in the gym with you. You wasn't with me when yes I was. I was with you when you were shooting in the gym. Alright. Alright, this shit is heat. And like I said, it's just enough of a switch up for me to where it keeps it interesting. Fire, dog. This Whole album so far is solid. Next up, we got Still Choose You featuring Mustard. We don't fuck with Mayo or what's the deal? The pain and you know you're alive. If you could feel the pain and know you're alive. Oh, oh. Hold on, hold on. Is he a, is he an artist now or is he not or is he just a producer? I don't know if I fuck we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Hold on. I was gonna say I don't know if I fuck with it, but I don't know yet. I'd like this not the song yet, but just the concept of mustard being featured. I just pray that you don't do me like the other ones did. Ah. I these hoes and I still you. That's what I promise I was never gonna do. I'm not laughing at the song. I like the song, but I'm just laughing at the idea that like, what if someone chose this as their fucking first first dance wedding like it's a nice sentiment like out of everybody i chose you and you chose me but like it's not ex <laughs> imagine like hearing this you're at a wedding and this is the this is the song that the bride and groom dance to like babe out of all these hoes i chose you <laughs> That's what I promise I was never gonna do. I said fuck love before I ever met you. I feel like a lot of this portion right here is uh, based around Drake. The lyrics right there, three girls in the same day, I'm ashamed. Too many drinks have been given to me. I got some women that's living off me. Pay for their flights and hotels, I'm ashamed. Bet that you know them, I won't say no names. I've had sex four times this week, I'll explain. I missed a line in there, but it's kind of the same sentiment. And he's talking about trust issues, which is a whole nother Drake song. You know it's different from me. I came out the real bottom. Hey, I like that. I, li I like that. I just pray that you don't do me like the other ones did. All of these hoes and I still chose you. That's what I promise I was 
Never yeah. That, now that I know that that's the ending track to the first album, like or for the first section of the album, I like that because it's like the whole, the whole, all six songs before that are basically dark. Or I don't know, stays kind of stays a little lighter. So it's same energy. But yeah, I mean the sentiment of the of this song is different. Like the whole album is fuck love, but this one is right. Like I said, I was never gonna love again because the way the other ones did me dirty and all these hoes that are out here that I could be fucking on, like I chose you. Like, like you have that presence, you have that aura, you have that power over me. Just please don't do me in the same way that the ones prior to you did me. Like it's a nice sentiment. You can still hear the brokenness. You can still hear the... Uh, like the the resentfulness toward relationships, I guess you could say, but it's it's in a it's in a more positive light. Like it's a little more vulnerable, you know. So one through seven, only issue that I had here was probably G er G Herbo not having a verse. That's probably the only thing that I didn't like. But I liked all the features so far. Oh, what I was gonna say on the still choo choo chose you track, I was gonna say. Because Mustard didn't have a part, unless I missed it, unless I skipped it. I'm not a fan so far. And I think it might be because DJ Khaled scarred me for life. But I am not a fan when when producers are put on a feature. You produce the track. You are not a feature. And that's what the producer tags for. Like, it's kind of, I just don't know. It rubs me the wrong way when, when uh, just rubs me the wrong way when producers put themselves as features. I mean, and I'm sure that he didn't, like, require it, but just, eh. I do like the way the second portion of the album starts, like I said, with Pikachu. And uh, so Pikachu and Tragic, they sound different than the first seven songs. So I'm assuming this next seven is gonna sound a little bit different in terms of Sonics, but I don't really know, especially considering we got Kid Leroy and Marshmello. Like this, this is a whole different set. This is a whole different lineup right here. So let's move on, so done. See what I mean? A whole different sound right out the gate. This is what I was talking about. I like the island type vibe of this song okay, already. I'm done. So oh! I'm done. This is nice. I like the fucking dichotomy between the lightness of the beat and like the and like the the sadness of the lyrics. And I guess they kind of, even though they're different, they kind of match and this and the and the energies kind of match because whenever you're so done at like this point in a relationship. I guess it's like a refreshing type thing or like a, a relief type feeling. So there is no darkness once you reach that point because the relationship is ending. Like you gave it your all, you did everything that you could to try to salvage the relationship, but you know, it's it's over, we're so done. And it's like a freeing feeling. So I like that. And, and again, Pikachu and this right back to back, it's a, it's a whole different sound than the first seven tracks. I don't need you or nobody else. I'm yeah this is this is heat bruh i'm done so done with all the games you playing i'm numb so numb to all of the pain that you put me through you scarred me so much that i don't even feel anything because scar tissue has no has no nerve endings my heart is so scarred from the shit that, that I'm done. Like, I'm so numb. This track right here might be my favorite. We're technically three songs into this second half. We got Pikachu, So Done, and Tragic. It, it, Tragic, I still like. I don't want you to get the impression that I didn't like it. I just don't like Young Boy Never Broke Again. And the song is so, so short that I probably wouldn't listen to it because of that feature. But it matches the tone of the entire second portion of this three-part album, I guess you could say. And, I'm, and I think I like the sonics and the sound and just the overall atmosphere of this part of this part of the album all right so we did pikachu so done tragic always do three of those four already have videos from me so y'all link those in the card or i'll put them in the description or something so you could go direct to them but we're gonna move on we're moving on to feel something the kid leroy and marshmallow oh 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 I know that didn't just say Scott Storage, bruh. The, the dude's making a, he's one of the coldest motherfuckers with the keys. Y'all don't even know nothing about Scott Storage and his iconicness. Every song that you ever liked from 02 to 2009 is probably a Scott Storage type beat. I cannot believe I just heard that producer tag. Feel like I've been through so much, I don't even feel nothing. Hey. hey. Sometimes I might just back on track, but I feel lost again. You this sound, this sounds like Polo. Yourself, these people not your friends. Where would they this sounds like Polo G. Like, that's something that he would have said. Like, I pour up this cup just to feel something. That, that's hard. I like that. They only love me because I'm counting up these knots for them. I know they wouldn't be around if I was down to sticks and rocks. Oh, loud. Put it in reverse, Ted. 
that production's like swell up into like the full production sound coming through. Yo, Marshmallow is a beast, bruh. And you know this is a, this had to be like a Scott Storch Marshmallow collab. There wouldn't Scott Storch would not have a producer tag on here if he wasn't part of the collab. This might be my favorite song so far. The instrumentation, the singing, the pain, the melancholic feel, the lyrics about people switching up and and not staying real just because he's got success. Like yo. This is nice. I fight myself again. It's late as fuck. I'm thinking like right now. I need you right now. I'm in my bed. Paying up to the sky. Hoping that God can Need to pull me out of a cut. This is Phil Sun. I feel mm, bro. The way the production swells and then like it has like this it all falls out and then it's just the piano which i'm which i'm sure it's got storage on the piano it just has like that moment of like clarity after everything goes away and this this is the core of the message that we're talking about when it's just the piano and then it's all gonna come back in for the last drop bruh next up machine gun kelly a new fan clearly same thing for kid Leroy, and we got fuck you goodbye fuck you goodbye mean i'm wrong so fuck you i gave you love Why do I feel like I know that melody from somewhere? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where do I know these me this melody from? I try with you. Oh, it's from Drake. What the fuck song is it though? I try with you. There's more to life than sleeping in and getting high with you. I stop listening to things you say. See, so I heard that somewhere, so I obviously know that one. Fun fact about me, Eternal Sunshine Spotless Mind, probably top 10 in my movies. Maybe top five. I'll meet you in Montauk type beat. Box that you left in the bedroom. I guess I'll be dead soon. No stones, stone like love is only temporary highway to hell. Hanging out the roof, yelling. Fuck you, you heard me for the last time. I don't, all right, so that song is good. I kind of wish that Machine Gun Kelly kind of was a little higher in his vocal range. I think the Kid Leroy has a little bit more range vocally than Machine Gun Kelly does. Machine Gun Kelly's voice is like on the lower side. He knows where his wheelhouse is, but because the Kid Leroy is a better singer, like an actual has more range, he got, he got outshined by the, the Kid Leroy. It's a good song, I like the sentiment, but Machine Gun Kelly's vocals, I guess underwhelming, that's kind of a that's kind of a, a very abrasive term, underwhelming, but I guess that's what it, what it would be. It's a good song, but out of all the tracks that have features, it's definitely on the lower side for me. And then it could just be because I prefer, I prefer like Polo G and Lil Durk, like I prefer their styles to like, to match a little bit more with, uh, with the Kid Leroy, the Machine Gun Kelly's. I feel like if he would wrapped his verse right here, he could have he could have rapped something similar, but it would have had a little more impact because he would be rapping as opposed to trying to sing like the Kid Leroy did. All right, next up we got "Without You." Oh wait, wait, wait! Hold up, I've done this song too. You cut out a piece of me, and now I bleed internally. Left here without you, without you. All right, I've clearly done this song. This is one of my favorite Kid Leroy tracks. I think this was my first ever song that I did by him. This is solid, yo. The whole, this whole mixtape trilogy is solid. And that's the last track of this second portion. Bruh, the second portion for me is solid, but overall I like one through seven because the because the 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 uh the features were more consistent for sure young boy never broke again i'll never listen to track it tragic again because of that but machine gun kelly i kind of wish he would have rapped instead of instead of sung especially alongside the kid Leroy. solid son you cut out a piece of me and now i bleed i like the skit so far i mean I've, i'll obviously never listen to them again because it's a skit you know i'm not gonna unless i listen want to listen to the full album all the way through but the skits are like real. The skits are these are these are conversations that you have. I like the skits and their placement within the within the uh, placement within the overall context of the album. But I've already done maybe. But next up we got Wrong featuring Lil Mosey. All right, 
So I don't know if it's because of how deep we are in the album at this point. I kind of don't really fuck with that song that much. I don't know if I'm just getting like burnt out. I don't know. I don't know what it was about that. It was it was OK. It was okay. And a lot of people are gonna like that song and it could be just because of where it's at in the album or where, where the placement is and how deep we are. We're already we're already 16 tracks into a 30s. This is a long ass album, bro. Long ass album. And I knew that this was gonna be the case. I knew I was gonna eventually get frustrated about how long it is and all the same songs like start to sound the same. The production changes a little bit, but the overall sound of the album is very repetitive. All right, next up we got I Wish. Alright, so this is what I was afraid was gonna happen. I'm starting to get like fatigued of the album. It's all, I'm just like becoming numb to the sound and, and ugh, how many tracks in are we? We're 14. It's just the fact I know I have, we have 12 more songs, two skits, so 10 more songs. I'm just getting, I'm, I'm getting fatigued from the sound. I normally wouldn't let it have a negative effect on the review, but because I'm doing an album review, like this is part of the album review is if your album is crazy long and the songs and the subject matter are repetitive, you're saying the same things over and over just with different melodies and with different, you know, producers and with different features. Eventually, eventually the listener, at least for me, you get tired of it. All right. Next up, we got Not Fair featuring Corbin. I can't call I like this already. I like this production already. This is definitely a switch up in the sound. I like the I like his voice already. I like the pace. I like that the beat is very like simple so far. It's not like overly too crazy in terms of sound. Sonic is just it's just clean. Yep, I like this. I like this. Drop out to go hard. This drop out to go crazy. Never mind. Oh my god. Did this man say crash and burn Princess Diane? I don't know if that's a fucked up line or not. That that might be on par with Meek Mill saying, if I go out, I'm gonna go out with the chopper like Kobe Bryant. That might be that same level of disrespect. I honestly don't know. Either way, regardless of that, like I kind of wish that the production on this track kind of stayed a little more similar to the way the intro and when they dropped out all the all the instrumentation. I kind of wish it stayed in that little uh, in that little pocket right there. It would have had a more unique sound compared to the rest of the album. But when the production came in, it sounded like the rest of the album. I don't know how to explain it. It's a good song, but it's getting repetitive. That's really the only that's really my only knock on the album. Every song has the same subject matter as the song before. Yeah, it's just getting really repetitive for me at this point. There is definitely fatigue, like listening fatigue at this point. But the track on its own, like if this came up in shuffle, this is a good song. But the album as a full length album, too long for me. All right, next up we got Go, The Kid Leroy and Juice World. R.I.P. Now this song that sounds like I've done a video on it already. I'll hear, I'll know when I hear it. Okay, go, go, go. She always be talking like she no, no, no. I told her don't ever leave me long, long, long. Brown, brown, brown. Oh, go, go, go. Obviously made a video on it. Another video. Another one. Another video from the Kid Leroy that I've already done. And I fucked with it. Again, like this song is solid on its own, but in the in the position in the album, it's like you're running a 30, a 30 kil kilometer marathon. Like you're going to get tired by kilometer 17, 20. That's where we're at in the album. Like I'm, 
like the, the initial energy. Whenever energy is high, when everything is energetic, then nothing is energetic. When everything causes cancer, nothing causes cancer. It's like that same mentality for me. Like whenever this, all the songs have the same energy, there's not gonna be a whole lot of variation in terms of like w the way the song sounds. And I need variation for the way the song sounds if all the songs are gonna have the same subject matter. But this track right here, I don't even gotta listen to it. I know that it's a good track because I've done it. Next up, we got Tell Me Why. And I think, I think this is another song that I've done. Yeah, this is definitely the one that was directed by Cole Bennett. Tell me why, tell me why it's so hard to say goodbye. And when I get inside my mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one right here. This is another one of my favorite Kid Leroy tracks because I remember the emotion that I felt whenever I had heard it because I remember thinking, all right, this could be about a bad relationship or like how it's so hard to say goodbye whenever you got all the memories of this relationship. But I thought... This is clearly, this could clearly be a song that's about Juice World. But if we're talking about the overall context of the album, this placement for this song is good because this song sounds different than the ones prior. And it's similar in messaging, but because you can you can think of it in a different way, it's, it's enough of a change where I'm like, ah, okay, sweet. You know? All right, next up, we got Same Thing. I got something to confess. I ain't been doing my best. Who better I won't, I won't. I oh, my God. You running around with your friends saying that they, then, then they telling you that you could do better? Fuck those friends, yo. I like this. I like the bass line in the back. I know. This is nice right here. I can't be mad because I'll do the same. Oh, there's a little bop right here. This right here is heat. This is the switch up that I needed like five tracks ago. And again, still talking about the toxicity, still talking about how like you and I do the same thing. Why you gotta be such a hoe when I'm being such a hoe? Like I, I can't even be mad at you cause I'm doing it too. But the sound, the, the sonics of the, of the, like it sounds lighter. The, the 808 is heavier. It's not, it's not so, it's not so loud, I guess you could say. And he's not singing loudly. He's, he's, he's kind of just singing like down here. So it keeps this very chill vibe about it. This is this is heat right here. I like this. So I can be mad at you. And I'm not proud of the things I do. Okay, but I need you to know. You say I'm the one you trying to do me stupid. I, I like, like this a lot, yo. My bad. God. I know. God damn. I know. But I can't be mad at you because I do the same. Ooh. I do the same. A little variation on the drop. I. Do the same. I Yo, I think that one right there, that one might take it so far for the Kid Leroy and, and this album are my favorite. It's hard to say because the album's like 97 songs. That's a standout track for me amongst the others. That was hot. I fuck with that. I like the bop. I like I like the nice little vibe it had about it. I like that the 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 second drop of the production, it had like the doom doom, like it had three hits going into the drop. So it like kind of it kind of mixed it up and catches you by surprise a little bit. Fuck with it. All right, we're getting into the last stretch of the album. Next up, we got Erase You. You said I should love me, but it's all Just when I was getting tired of the sound. I like It's like he heard me and he heard like, oh shit, this is getting repetitive. I'm starting to get a little bored. I'm starting to get a little desensitized because now we're on like the 93rd track. He comes in and back to back, two different sounds from what the rest of the album has sounded like. I fuck with this again. You got me stressed out. Again, yo, again, I feel like I hear the, I feel like I hear the Drake influence. Like, I, th these are lyrics that Drake would write, 100%. Cause I thought you was all mine. Ooh. You said I should love me, but it's all lies. This is hard, bro. You said that you love me, but it's all lies. Bruh, that was hard again. Short and sweet and to the point. One minute and 30 seconds. One minute, 45 seconds. We're here and we're out. This is fire. The, the end of the album is kind of ending on a high note for me so far. We'll see. Next up, we got Running. I don't have so much. It's all of you. I like the, I like the drum. I like the hi-hat and the clap. Ooh, I like that. Again, the, the the subject matter is the same still, but I like the production switch up. I like the little, I like how the low end is like boom, boom, boom. Like it's hitting, like it's hitting. It's not, it's not the same 808 pattern as the rest of the album. Press on your fuck, you fuck, give me 
All right, now we're ending on a high note. The song, the sentiment, again, like I keep on saying, it's the same from like the other tracks. It's a little bit different because he's saying like, you know, we're toxic for each other, but I still end up running back to you because I love you in that way. Or maybe I think that this is what love is. And so I keep running back to you. But the production switch up is just enough. And then the strings right there at the very end. Solid, bro. All right, next up, need you most. Parentheses, so sick. We fight every day and night. You want me to make the time. You always tell me you ain't surprised. Now I'm so sick of these love songs. So sick. No way. I know this is not a sample of Neo right here. So sick of love songs, so sad is something. Don't know the, don't know the lyrics, but you know what I'm talking about. Can't bring myself to even kick on my phone. I need you to move. I'm sorry for all of the time I fucked up. Fuck uh, pour up in my cup. Tonight I'm getting fucked up. And we tip, we pour out a little bit because tonight it's in your memory. It's in the memory of our relationship because that shit is dead now, just like you would pour up for the dead homies. Hard. So sad and slow. Fire, fire. The ne the neo sample, the neo lyric sample was already gonna be a hit for me. That shit was that shit was popping back in the day, son. From tell me why, same thing, erase you, running, and need you most. Perfect ending for me. Right when I was getting tired, they switched it up just enough. I fuck with this. Next up, last track. Finally, I've been recording for like 99 hours. Gotta get a little more light. I'm grateful for what you did for me. Dangerous now, I do them just how you did to me. Mm. Now I'ma be savage, but you made it happen. Mm. You made it happen. Why can't I get past it? I'm gonna be selfish, and no one can change. Oh, I'm gonna be bad, bad, bad. Now I'm up in LA, I'm with a bitch from the bay. I'm selling her. I wonder what happened. I thought we would last, that we turn into ashes. All right, yo, that rounds out this whole album. Solid, that last track, it was all right. Not not my favorite track, but overall, I mean, the album is, the album is solid. I would say that this album is an eight for me. I mean, the Kid Leroy for me doesn't miss. He's just too good. There were a few songs in here that could have stood out a little more than others. Like they, they had more potential or they, they were, I expected them to be better. So like, fuck you, goodbye with Machine Gun Kelly. I think Machine Gun Kelly rapping on that track would have made it a little bit better. Uh, this last Selfish one, I think that the album could have ended after Need You Most. That last Selfish one is like, you know, not too, no one too crazy about it, but for 29 tracks, having maybe one or two misses, I mean, minus the skit, so probably like 25, 24 tracks, it's solid, because I like the style, I, I like the Kid Leroy, I need him to evolve, I'll, I'll let it pass right now, because it's a mixtape, and along, and it's like along the same things of the other mixtapes, but I need him to have a little bit, not not experiment, but just a little bit of growth, a little bit of evolution. If, if we get another album, that sounds exactly like this one. That album is going to be rated very poorly from me just because I'm going to be frustrated with the fact that we have no evolution. So overall, one to 10 for this album, it would have been an eight, but it's just whenever you put all three of these mixtapes together and it's one long continuous sound and it's an hour straight of just that up until it was a mix up at the end, like that's going to take a couple of points off for me. So I'd probably say this is like a seven out of 10 for me. If the next album sounds like this, that one might be like a three or four just because there's there needs to be evolution.